Yeah, I believe that uh, the, the young lady with the auburn hair. Uh, the We would like to begin the Finance and Audit Committee for the Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District. Uh, at this time, uh, would you call the roll, please? Director Rosali. Director Wood. Here. And Director Kelly. Here. All committee members present. Have anybody that wishes to address the group? Would you like me to move the consent first? Oh, excuse me. Yes. I'll, uh, move, I'll move the consent calendar. First meeting I've run, I just I apologize. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Would you please call the roll? Director Rosali. Aye. Director Wood. Aye. And Director Kelly. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, we have a presentation item. Amanda Thomas, would you Sorry, please? Man. Sorry. That's right. That's quite all right. Chief Harms, um, I'm Amanda Thomas, Chief Financial Officer for the District, and um, I would like to introduce this evening Elisa Perry, who is an Outreach and Support Manager with SERPT, and she's here to provide the committee with the fiscal year 18, 19, 
annual SERP update. Um, there's no um, action required by the committee this evening. This is simply your opportunity to hear directly from a SERP representative and um, ask any questions that you may have. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Elisa. Hi there, Elisa Perry with the CalPERS Served OPEB Trust. Thanks for having me this evening. And I'm thrilled to be able to be here today to give you this update on your SERP account, which was established in August 2012 to help fund your liability for retiree health care. Uh, as you're aware, under governmental accounting standards, you're required to measure and report your liability for retiree health care every two years. And the SERPT program is an investment vehicle for you to fund those liabilities. This is just a list of the topics that I hope to cover, and please, inc please feel free to ask me any questions, even if they're on this list, and I'll do my best to get an answer for you. So on your most recent OPEB actuarial evaluation report, which was completed as of June 30, 2017, by Bitmore Risk Services, which is now McLeod Watts, uh, performed by Catherine McLeod, of, who is now with McLeod Watts. So as of that valuation date, June 30, 2007, the total OPEB liability or the value of all the uh, promises as of that date was $216 million. And then what Catherine does is break that amount into an annual amount that you would contribute over a certain amount of years to f fully fund that liability. And that amount, which is referred to as the actuarially determined contribution, is $19,597,000. So the retiree premiums that you pay on an annual basis, which uh, for the current fiscal year were 9,632,000, that counts as a payment towards your actuarially determined contribution. And then if your funding policy is to fund that uh, ADC, what you do is you net out the retiree premiums and send uh, the difference to the CERT program. On this slide you have your SERP account summary. It's showing the district's initial contribution back in August 2012 of $1.7 million. And then over the years since then, you've added additional contributions of just under $33 million. Uh, so far, you've not taken any disbursements. The grand total we've charged you so far for the trust administration is $110,000. And we've delivered investment earnings of over $8.2 million. So your total trust assets as of June 30, 2019 are at uh, $42.6 million. And then your money-weighted annualized rate of investment return for those nearly seven years is 6.75%. And then when you compare that to the near-term expectation of strategy one, which is the uh, asset allocation strategy that you participate in, the near-term time-weighted expected rate of return for that investment strategy is 5.85%. So based on the timing of your cash flows, um, when you make those contributions, uh, the, t the timing of the, the contributions as well as the size of the contributions, your actual returns are going to be different than the time-weighted returns. And in fact, you're actually um, outperforming the, the near-term expectation. Any questions so far? Gentlemen? Thank you. Okay. So this slide shows your cash flow summary by fiscal year. It shows each year's contributions and net contributions, which are, of course, the same because there are no disbursements. And then what you've earned in investment income each year, as well as what we've charged you uh, in fees for each year. And fees include uh, trust administration as well as all investment-related expenses. You can see how those that asset balance has grown over the years through those contributions plus the investment earnings. And you can see uh, cumulatively that net rate of return and how it's um, kind of um, fluctuated since you're, you first joined and how it's kind of stabilized over the years to end at 6.75% as of June 30, 2019. So as of your last uh, valuation date, as of June 30, 2017, your total low-pep liability was $216 million. Your SERPT assets were at $27 million. So divide the SERPT assets by the total low-pep liability, 
and you get a funded status of 13%. Of course, your next valuation report will be calculated as of June 30, 2019, and since then your assets have grown, and depending on uh, how your liability has uh, changed from one period to the next, that funded status will likely increase, and the important thing is you're headed in the right direction. These are some uh, investment considerations, and from what I understand, um, there have been no uh, you know, major changes to your funding policy or to your investment uh, strategy. So if the answer uh, to these questions remains the same, then it looks like you know, the, the investment strategy where you are now, which is strategy one, is probably you know, the right place to be. If any of these things change, then it might be uh, time to consider looking at one of the other strategies, because we do have uh, three options, strategy one, and then we have two more conservative options. This is our menu of options. So again, you're in strategy one, which has a near-term expected rate of investment return of 5.85%. Over the long term, which is from uh, one year to 60 years, that return is, the expected rate of return is 7.59%. And then we have the two more conservative strategies. And as those expected long-term rates of return go down, so do the, the risk level as it's measured here by standard deviation of expected returns. Here you can see the SERP asset class target allocations. So this is what uh, differentiates one strategy from the other. As you can see, all, th all three strategies are investing in the same public market asset classes, just with different allocations. For instance, uh, strategy one has a 59% allocation to global equity with a plus or minus 5% um, range. So it could be as high as 64%, as low as 50 54%. The... In the benchmark column, you can see the industry standard objective benchmarks that we measure our performance against for each asset class. So in a couple of slides, I'm going to show you the actual SERPT time-weighted investment returns compared to a benchmark return. So this column here shows you what those benchmarks consist of. And they're all industry standard. Here you can see the, the time-weighted investment returns for the SERP's three asset allocation strategies. So these are not specific to the district. These are just for the SERP program. And uh, as you can see, from one year to the next, there can be some pretty um, you know, wide ranges. But over the long term, you'll see that they you know, stabilize and look more like those long-term expectations. Uh, strategy, when we first started the trust in 2007, we only had one strategy, strategy one. And then we added the other two uh, in 2011 and 2012. Here you can see those time-weighted investment returns for all three strategies for a number of different time periods from as, one, as recent as the one month ending June 30, 2019. Going back all the way for strategy one, we have a 10-year return at 9.42%. And the important thing to note here is how well we track to our benchmarks. Um, as a passively managed uh, investment vehicle, you should see very close tracking error to benchmark. And you can see in each of these different time periods, the tracking error is very, very close. Uh, and there's some in instances where it's a little bit higher, it's a little bit lower. Um, but over the long term, we're really tracking to that benchmark. So that means you know, you know what you're going to get. And over the long term, the actual returns will look you know, very close to the expected rate of investment return. You can see also in the assets column the uh, value of the assets in each strategy and what that tells you is most of the money most of the employers are in strategy one uh, where the district participates so um, most of the participating employers in the trust are in a situation similar to you they have a similar you know funded status they've got um, you know a long way to go they've got some work to do to fully fund that liability so they want to be in the strategy that offers the potential for the highest returns they're willing to you know take on a little bit of volatility along the way in order to reach those returns again these are just some uh, 
considerations. With OPEB, the employer has complete control over the funding policy, so we don't tell you how much to contribute or when to contribute, whether or not you can take disbursements. That's all up to you. Uh, we give you the three strategies. You get to choose which one you want to participate in, which one uh, best suits your, your short and long-term goals. Uh, Volunteer, vo uh, contributions are always voluntary, so um, you get to decide if, when, how much to contribute. Again, you have the ability to uh, reimburse out of the trust account, and you work closely with your consulting OPEB actuary to uh, determine the funding policy that's going to best get you to that goal. Again, just some, some considerations uh, to think about along the way. As far as investment strategy, again, as long as uh, you don't anticipate any um, changes to, you know, your liabilities, your benefits, anything like that, it sounds like, you know, strategy one is the place to be in uh, for, the, for the time being and into the foreseeable future. It sounds as though that's the right strategy for you. It's working out very well. Um, and again, that's where most of the uh, participating employers are. If, you know, again, things change, it might be a good time to look at other strategies. But for now, I think you're in the right place. As far as fees, the SERP charges a low participation cost fee rate of 10 basis points of assets under management. Uh, that's all-inclusive. It covers all uh, trust administration, all investment-related fees, custodial service fees. It covers what we pay to our third-party administrator for the online record-keeping system, which is where you can log on and view your account balance, access your statements. So, Everything is all included in that 10 basis points. And uh, to put that into, um, to explain that better, it's, it's 10 one hundredths of 1%. So uh, assuming we manage $1 million over the course of the year, we would charge you a grand total of $1,000 to manage that million. It's very, very uh, low. It's a very low fee rate, and the reason being is we're a not-for-profit. So we charge a fee rate that allows us to collect enough in fees to cover our costs, you know, to keep the lights on and not retain a profit. So there are other trust providers out there whose fee rates tend to be anywhere from, you know, five, seven, ten times higher than that. So the lower the fee rate, that means the more money that remains in your account and less being paid out in fees. You can see a history of that... Uh, fee rate since our inception. It's been higher. It's been lower. It's never been higher than 15 basis points. And in fact, uh, we've gone steadily down the last several uh, fiscal years as our uh, costs have stabilized and we've con continued to add employers and those employers uh, send us money. So while the fee rate is not guaranteed, I mean, based on the amount of money that's coming in and the way that we can, you know, manage our, our costs, keep them down, I don't see that fee rate going anywhere but down in the future. This has a breakdown of the 562 employers that are currently contracted with us. You can see we've got uh, 30 fire districts. It's a nice, uh, diverse group of employers and includes the state of California. And lastly, uh, when it comes to the, your OPEB trust account with the SERPT, there's no need to ever call an 800 number. You just call myself or Matt directly. You've got our desk number, mobile number. We have two dedicated email addresses uh, SERPed for you, which is you know, kind of a catch-all for anything SERPed related. It's monitored by all the, the 13 of us that um, are part of the SERP program. And we are committed to excellent customer service. We always get back to our employers right away. The other program email address is SERPT account at calpers.ca.gov, and that's uh, if you have any trouble with the online record keeping system, just send an email. Um, we can get you squared away. So that's what I have for you. Are there any uh, questions? Is there any additional information I can provide? Gentlemen, anything? No. No? No, this is wonderful. We'd like to thank you very much for the presentation and for uh, explaining uh, where the SERPT is, where it began, and where it is now. Thank you. Perfect. My pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thank you for being here. All right. Uh, Ms. Thomas, would you like to update us on uh, financial report through April? I would. 
Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Um, Amanda Thomas, Chief Financial Officer, and I'm here this evening um, to present the financial report for the 10 months ended April 30th, 2019. So the first chart that we look at is um, the cash balance in all of the district held funds. Um, so I will clarify on this slide. Um, this does not include the SERPT because that's a, that's a trust account that's separate from the district funds. So here we're looking at um, only the district funds. Um, and you can see um, by the red line, which represents the balance during this current fiscal year, 1819, um, that as of April 30th, we had a negative balance of um, uh, approximately six million. Um, the reason for that negative, and if you'll notice comparing to the green line, which is um, the prior fiscal year, 1718, the decrease relative to that year, um, is that if you'll remember, we did um, redeem about $25 million in um, pension obligation bonds um, in the fall of 2018. Um, so that reduced our cash balance, obviously also reduced our liabilities, um, but that's why we, we have a lower cash balance this year than we did during the same time last year. The next chart looks just um, at our general fund. Um, so not all funds, but only the, the district's general fund. Um, and this is showing our general fund reserves, um, which which don't necessarily um, track with the cash balance because um, when we're looking at reserves, we're taking into consideration both recognized revenues and expenses, whether or not we've actually received or paid the money. So um, uh, the, the important factor here are property taxes. And because property taxes are due on April 10th, we recognize those revenues as of April, even though quite often we don't actually get the cash in our account from the county until later than April. So um, you're not, you didn't see that on the, the cash balance chart previously, but you do see it reflected on this chart because we've um, recognized those revenues um, in the month that they were due. So looking at the red line, which again represents the current fiscal year, um, you can see going from March to April, we had a jump up and that's reflecting the second installment of uh, property tax revenues. Um, as we finish the year, so the remaining two months of the year, we expect, you know, having received all of our property tax revenues, we expect to spend more money than we get in. So that's why you kind of see the decline um, in the, the green line, um, which represents last year. And um, obviously, we'll expect to see the same thing for the red line. Um, the next time I do this report, uh, based on our budget for fiscal year 2018-19, um, we are expecting our reserves to end at about $25 million. That would be our ending balance on June 30th, and that's represented by the yellow dashed line on this chart. And it typically county lags three months on... No, it's really only about a month oh, um, in okay. terms of, yeah, getting the money transferred in, yes. Okay, so um, this chart is showing us our medic cost recovery revenues. Again, the red line is the current fiscal year. So as of April 30th, we had collected about $30.5 million of this revenue source, and that compares to a budget for the year of 35.5. Um, so you can see um, as of April, we are trending slightly above the budget line. And kind of if you look back um, over the earlier months of the year, we we're tracking very closely closely on that budget line, maybe a little bit above. Um, you will notice that we are um, tracking above the green line, representing the prior fiscal year, and that's due largely um, to um, rate increases that have occurred um, over that period of time, um, contributing to uh, higher revenues collected. The next chart shows total revenues. Um, Again, looking at the red line, as of April 30th, we were at about 193 million of revenues for the year compared to a budget of about 215 million. Um, you see tracking very close to where we would expect to be um, at, that, at that point in the year. 
Turning to look at our expenses, this chart is showing salaries and benefits expenses. So as of April 30th, we had actual expenses of 145 million compared to a budget for the year of 176 million. And you can see that red line is basically right on top of the blue line, um, tracking almost um, exactly at our budget number. Um, and then the green line is representing uh, expenses from the prior year. Looking at total expenditures, you can see here, as of April 30th, total expenditures of 173 million compared to a budget of just under 215 million. Um, and uh, you can see that the red line is, is showing slightly below the blue line, so that's really um, due to lower than anticipated expenditures in our non-labor accounts, so our services and supplies accounts. So I just showed you we're tracking really right on budget for labor, so it's those other categories where um, our spending was less less than, than what was budgeted through April 30th. And then finally, this is a chart that I, I include in every presentation. I think that, um, you know, I sort of, I'm not, I'm not going to compete with the, <laughs> the presentation that you just saw, which was obviously much more in-depth. Um, I will only point out that this presentation obviously is through April 30th. The numbers that Elisa was giving you were through June 30th. Um, so the contributions, earnings, and, and total assets were a little bit higher than what I'm showing here. But as of April 30th, um, we are at about 41 Point two million um, in uh, assets in the SERPED fund. Um, and as you heard, that continues to grow through contributions and investment earnings. So just in summary, for the 10 months ended April 30th, um, our, ca our cash balance is lower than um, in the prior year due to the uh, pension bond retirement that occurred earlier this fiscal year. Um, general fund revenues are trending on budget. General fund expenditures trending slightly below budget due to lower than expected non-labor expenses. And our general fund reserves as of April 30th are at $45 million um, and budgeted to be $25 million as of June 30th, as I mentioned, because we will be spending uh, more than comes in in the, in the remaining, or we will have spent in the remaining two months of the year that have already occurred at this point. <laughs> And um, that concludes my presentation, but I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Any questions, gentlemen? No. Thank you for okay. a very in-depth report. And thank you for those lines tracking exactly where you thought they'd be. <laughs> Sometimes it works out that way. <laughs> All right. Um, next meeting date will be the 22nd of August. Any anticipated action or presentation items? Think of something <laughs> and, and let our fabulous board clerk know. All right, then. Uh, I see for no further business before this body. Uh, we will proceed to uh, close and adjourn. Thank you for being here.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Directors regular meeting, Thursday, July 25th, 6 p.m., uh, for the Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have our Metro Cable announcement. Open session meeting is videotaped for cable cast on Metro Cable 14. Replay on Monday, July 29th at 6 p.m. Tuesday, July 30th at 9 a.m. on Channel 14. Webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. The open session meetings are also available for viewing on the district website at www.metrofire.ca.gov. Now we come to the public opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within district jurisdiction, including items on or not on the agenda. Madam Clerk, do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers this evening. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to consent items. Madam Chair, Chair uh, I would move the consent agenda. Second. It's been first and seconded. Please call the roll. Director Sailors. Aye. Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Sheets. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Wood. Aye. Clark? Aye. Barnes? Aye. And Jones? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Now we have a special presentation item. I believe Chief Harms is going to handle that. And Director Kelly. I think you uh, should. Congratulations. Take it. You're going to talk. Of course you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that camera equipment he brought. Okay. <laughs> our special. Go ahead, dog. No, you weren't. Go ahead. Zero six hundred. Wow. I mean, a really early wow. or really late. I'm really early. Let's go. All right. Thank you very much. This is a 15 years of service to Director Kelly and uh, myself as well as the rest of the board. Uh, please accept our, our uh, congratulations and job well done over the years. Thank you. started is that you have to give us a little words of wisdom now from your 15 years. Oh, no. Uh, from my 15 years? Uh, let me see. So years through uh, 1 through 14, I knew nothing, and I still know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I've got 30 years as a union carpenter, and uh, that's the greatest organization I thought I'd ever belong to, and then I came along and, and became a director here. Uh, it's been my pleasure to be part of this organization for 15 years. You certainly uh, uh, epitomize what Metro Fire is all about, Chief. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be part of such a fine organization. And uh, certainly I don't know how the rest of them feel, but I know I do very little uh, to make this organization as great as it is. It's the men and women. My participation has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations to Director Matt Kelly. <clears throat> we are moving on to reports, president report. There is n nothing at this time. Fire chief's report. Long report tonight. Chief. Uh, no retirements. No promotions. Uh, we're recruiting for a training day staff. Um, we are recruitment starts tomorrow for firefighter paramedic for 20-1. Um, we started on Monday a new academy of 26 recruits. They have completed four days. 
Um, on the 16th, we had the promotional ceremony. We had 37 employees that uh, we went through the promotional ceremony, and it was really neat to see the ACs, BCs, captains, and professional staff, and just a large amount of family and a large amount of young kids all there running around. Uh, we had our county chiefs meeting um, also on um, Monday. Uh, the SRP Academy 19-2 started at Station 50, and there's six folks in that academy. And then we will run a second academy probably either in late August or early September. Uh, one of the things that we also worked on in the past two weeks is really about ambulance coverage. Uh, out of the 26 recruits that went into the academy, 10 of those came out of the SRP Academy. So it had an impact on our ability to staff the SRP units. Uh, we decided on Monday, or it, was, it started on Monday, is to put the flex medics in which we staff on overtime with firefighters back in service. So we put two of those back in service on Medic 22 and Medic 51 because of uh, until we get these SRPs out of the academy and run another one, our staffing for our ambulances are down right now. Um, other than that, myself and Director Orzali uh, met yesterday with the ARC President Green. Uh, we had a great discussion on career pathways and some of the things that Metro can be involved with with the school as the school moves forward. Um, that's all of my report, unless you have any more questions. Are there any questions for the Chief? All right, moving on to the operations report, Assistant Chief Wagaman. Can you hear me okay? There we go. There you go. Good evening, and Chief Harms. Uh, Tyler Wagaman, Assistant Chief of Operations. I'm covering for Deputy Chief Bridge this evening. Since we last reported out on uh, July 11th, the district has run 3,745 calls. Of those, 2,828 were EMS calls at a transport rate of 70%. Also during that time frame, our district ran nine building fires and 54 grass fires. It's been pretty busy. One of those grass fires that I'd like to speak to was in our uh, Battalion 9 area. It's Calvine near um, Chester in the uh, Gorman Acres area. Uh, the grass fire started right about sundown. First unit arrived, had about a quarter acre, and they had some access issues due to multiple fence lines they had to cut. So by the time they actually reached the field, the fire started to progress pretty rapidly. Um, Due to a quick response by not only themselves calling for additional resources, but the resources that we had on hand with not only Metro, but resources from Consumnes and Wilton Fire. Uh, we stopped the forward progress at approximately 17 acres uh, just before the fire started to breach the, uh, the residential house line. Uh, luckily, there was some nice defendable space there, and all the uh, structures were protected before the fire actually encroached on their property, but it got very close. So strong work to the crews on the ground, uh, all 11 pump and roll rigs, as well as f uh, four water tenders, our dozer, copter two, and four command units. The next grass fire was uh, very unique. It occurred on uh, July 18th. It came in during the evening hours on an island in the middle of our parkway in the American River. So just downstream from Rio Americano High School, there's a very large island. It's about 2,000 feet long. It's called um, uh, Rio, uh, Rio Island. And when crews arrived, they, they could definitely see there was a, a progressive, progressing uh, active uh, wildland fire was starting to crown up into the trees, and they were concerned that the fire was going to spread across the waterway onto the side of the parkway and uh, expose some of the either structures or um, uh, other, other areas that we would obviously want to keep the fire out of, some other types of infrastructure. So we sent uh, our UAV out there to determine the best access. It was a great use for that resource. We utilized our boats to uh, send some crews in by hand using hand tools and uh, floto pumps they actually pumped water right out of the river, use hose right, right there on the, uh, on the island to stop the forward progress. So the crews did a great drop, job and absolutely pitched our conditions. Then the next morning, we sent our helicopter out there to pick up crews at Rio Americano High School, dropped them right in the middle of the island so they can finish the work. So again, a great use for our air resources, both UAV and helicopter and our boat. So with that being said, those are two unique incidents that I wanted to share with you this evening, and that concludes the operations report, unless you have any questions for me. Are there any questions for Chief Wagaman? All right, sir, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. We have uh, Firefighters Local 522 report. 
Mr. Jamison. Good evening, Director Jones, uh, directors, chief arms and staff. Um, I just wanted to also reiterate it's, uh, the, the promotional ceremony was, was uh, fantastic, having such a large group of people um, from staff all the way up to assistant chiefs. and um, it's, Metro Fire is in good hands. There's a lot of great young people coming up. They're going to be here for a long time and leaving a mark on this agency. Um, and then listening to Chief Wagaman, I think it's important to note um, some of the things that are going on, and, and also Chief Harms, you know, that when we are running short out there, uh, the flex medics are in service because there's not as many ambulances out there. It's nice during the day to help them out, but at night there's less uh, service. So they will be running probably more calls at night. So our members are having to step up due to staffing shortages based on some of those things. So it's important to, I think, note that they're doing it. And then you listen to what uh, Chief Wagaman said, and the variety of stuff we have to respond to. I mean, we're, we're expected to, to have a lot of different um, specialties and do different things, and I think it's, uh, it speaks to the credit to the, to the men and women of the agency and those that support us behind the scenes. And uh, so I think it's just, I wanted to point that out, that um, as, it's, as it gets hot, and you know, it's not just hot out there on the, uh, on the grass fires. When it's 105 or 107 on this weekend, those ambulances, and it gets, it's, it's a diff, difficult work. So they do great, a great job. And uh, finally, I know we've we had this discussion and we're working through the contract. Um, you know, the men and women of this agency, they, they deserve a good contract. And I know we've had a lot of discussion about it and we'll continue to work through the process. Um, I, I, I do appreciate that we've had the dialogue we've had, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue to move this forward and, and hopefully be done soon. So uh, thank you again for the communication and the openness to talk about in the dialogue, and that's all I have, so have a good night. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mr. Jameson, Captain Jameson? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, moving on to committee and delegate reports. There is no executive committee report out. We'll move to communication center, JPA. Chief Wagaman. The last comm center board meeting was canceled on July 23rd. Our next meeting is on August 13th here at Metro Fire Headquarters at 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, thank you very much. We have no report for the California Fire and Rescue Training, JPA. Moving to finance and audit committee, Director Kelly. <clears throat> the Finance and Audit Committee met earlier, and a summary of our meeting is as follows. Uh, the cash balance is lower than prior year due to pension bond retirement. Uh, the general fund revenues trending on budget. General fund expenditures trend slightly below budget due to lower than expected non-labor expenses. And the general fund reserves of $45 million as of April 30th budgeted to be $25 million as of June 30th. Okay, thank you very thank, thank you, you very much. Ms. Thomas. <laughs> All right, policy committee, Director Gould. No report. No report. And here we go, down down the stretch. Uh, we've come to board member questions and comments. We'll start all the way to my left tonight. Uh, Director Barnes, welcome back. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Sorry, I was trying to think about what I'm gonna say. Uh, thank you for those who actually, all of you who covered for me last meeting, I was obviously on vacation with family, reconnecting and recharging the batteries, which is well overdue. Uh, so I appreciate you doing that. Sorry I missed the uh, promotional ceremony. It's always a great time uh, when people start the new chapters of their career. So thank you for that. Director Kelly, congratulations of 15 years. Uh, Same thing like this, I'm coming up, you know, I can't believe my first four years went by like it has and it seems like it's still flying by. So congratulations on that, it's a good accomplishment. I have to say a congratulations to my wife on her 25 years of service with the California Highway Patrol, and uh, today was her anniversary date, so congratulations to her on that. She is my senior when it comes to and my boss at home also. <laughs> uh, but most importantly to the men and women of Metro Fire, I will say it's already been said the great work that you do, but coming up, think of the next couple of days are going to be 100, 105 degree days, which means call volumes are going to go up, ambulance rides are going to go, people are putting on turnouts, running and going. And... Uh, this industry is different than most, right? It gets too hot in some events, they get to cancel events, right? People get to go inside and stay inside, but that's not the way this profession works. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you who uh, continue to do the great work that you do and represent this organization. Uh, the report that we had, it sounded like it would have been filmed for a great movie, what happened on the island, right? Boats, helicopters, and trucks, and pumping water. So uh, that is great work, but it's miraculous work that we do because it saves lives. So thank you for everybody that does that. Thanks for holding it down last week, and I look forward to many meetings to come. Okay, thank you, Director. Uh, Director Clark? Uh, 
Yeah, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Director Kelly on his 15 years. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, when I came on this board, um, uh, he was here. I've, I've, obviously, I've been here 12 years, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure working with him all these years, and uh, look forward to working with him a few more years. I would also echo the, uh, the, the words of uh, Director Barnes on uh, safety out there with the heat. Uh, it must be terrible, especially when you're wearing the turnouts and uh, the gear and all that. And uh, it's it's really uh, uh, uncomfortable when you, when you're not you you know you're out there in your bathing suit, if you will. Uh, so imagine with all that gear. So um, everybody, stay safe out there and and uh, stay hydrated. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Director Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also thank you, Matt. Uh, I met you six and a half years ago when you were one of the uh, person's interviewing me right. for replacement for the Division Four seat. So I appreciate you selecting me and appreciate working with you all these years. Congratulations. Uh, one other thing, um, Captain Vestal, uh, it's been wonderful. Every time, turn on the news almost every day, there's somebody from Metro on there. Um, while it's always good to see your face, it's also great to see others. And there have been a lot of other faces that have been speaking for us on our behalf, and they've all done a phenomenal job. So that's credit to you for all that you've done. and. Like everyone else has said, just be safe and stay hydrated this weekend. Thanks. Thank you very much, Director. Director Ozali. First, I wanted to congratulate Matt on his 15 years of service to Metro Fire. Uh, it's an, an honor to work with you, and I appreciate everything that you've done. I also want to express my appreciation to Chief Harms. Uh, for the time spent meeting with uh, ARC's President Green on what I think has the potential to be a really important initiative for our community. With that, thank you. Thank you, Director Rosali. Director Gould. Thank you, Madam Chair. Matt, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Director Sailors. Mm -hmm. um, Director Green, congratulations. Um, job well done. Um, Everyone stay safe and hydrated out there this weekend and for the rest of the month. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Director Kelly. I was looking for Director Green. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's, no, it's quite all right. Oh, God. It's quite all right. Um, I wanted to say again, thank you for allowing me to be part of this fine organization. And uh, uh, everybody be safe during the, uh, the holiday. Thank or, you. Excuse me, it's not quite the holiday. Yeah. It's the weekend. Every weekend. <laughs> Every weekend is a holiday. It's a summer it's weekend. A holiday. No weekend worries. Holiday. <laughs> Director Sheets. Uh, two things. Congratulations, uh, Director Kelly. Uh, I hopefully uh, will learn more. Uh, I think the first year that I um, was on the Finance and Audit Committee, I, I relied heavily on a lot of his guidance, so I really appreciated that. Um, I also wanted to extend thank you to Station 31 and 32. Uh, I've been able to do uh, some station visits, and they've been very uh, generous uh, with their hospitality. And that is it. Be safe this weekend. Okay. Thank you very much. I do have a few shout-outs. First of all, congratulations, Director Kelly. Thank 15 you. years. Well done. Let's go for 15 more. There we are. Okay. Uh, I'd also like in advance to thank Metro Fire for hosting the Parkway Coalition monthly meeting. will be held here tomorrow. And we appreciate the opportunity to uh, to uh, mm, uh, to host to host the Parkway Coalition here at Metro and give folks a tour of our headquarters. I appreciate that very much. Um, the promotion ceremony, promotional ceremony, was excellent. What made it so cool is we had the very, very large conference room at Rancho Cordova City Hall. It was filled with family and friends, and that was such a strong showing. I was. Totally impressed, and it was just a wonderful event to attend. Appreciate it very much. Uh, two shout-outs for uh, jobs well done to our CERT team and also to our boat crew. We had the inaugural event for the Great American Triathlon last Saturday. That's a very strong local community event that has replaced Epi's Great Race called the GAT, Great American Triathlon. And our CERT team provided support services, including first aid, and our boat crews ensured the safety of everyone out on the river. And I understand they got a little busy later in the day as well. So job well done, and thank you for your help. With that, 
I will adjourn this meeting until our next one, uh, the second, to, uh, second Thursday next month. Thank you.